Hello students, today we are going to study displacement reactions. But before we do that, let us begin with what is activity series of elements. You can see a series of metals and non-metals right in front of you. This is what is the activity series of elements. It is a series in which elements are arranged in the order of their decreasing reactivity from top to bottom. Metals beginning with potassium till platinum are arranged in the order of the decreasing reactivity and non-metals beginning with fluorine and ending with iodine have been arranged in the order of their decreasing reactivity. Fluorine is the most reactive non-metal and iodine is the least reactive non-metal. Potassium is the most reactive metal and platinum is the least reactive metal. Now let us study the entire activity series and try and learn it. So the activity series of metals can be learned as follows. Kedar Nath ka mali aloo zara pike pakata hai kyunki har taraf alag aloo padta hai. So Kedar K for potassium, Nath Na for sodium, Ka Ca for calcium, Mali Mg for magnesium, Alu Al for aluminium, Zara Zn for zinc, Fike Fe for iron, Pakata Pb for lead, He H for hydrogen, Kyunki Cu for copper, Har is for Hg mercury, Alag is for Ag silver, Alu is for Au gold and Parta is for Pt platinum. This is a way that you can learn activity series. Now in the series you can see that there are certain metals and then in the series you can also notice that there is hydrogen which is not a metal but it is still being included in the series. Now first of all you should know that in activity series metals have been arranged in the order of their decreasing reactivity. Decreasing reactivity means the way in which they react with other elements. Now if you see uh, look at potassium it is a most reactive metal most reactive metal means it the way it reacts is much much more than the way other metals react the metal platinum at the end on the other hand is the least reactive metal it does not react with any of the elements any of the reagents or any of the solutions now um, potassium being more reactive why are we using this uh, particular series because this is very helpful in understanding what are displacement reactions so potassium being very reactive if it is made to react with any other salt solution or with any other say acids or with water it is it always displaces a metal which is below it in the activity series we will understand it when we study about displacement reactions now before we do that let us see why is hydrogen included in the series though it is a non-metal now why is hydrogen included in the reactivity or the activity series of metals it is since hydrogen just like metals has a tendency to lose electrons and form an electropositive ion now as you know potassium has an electronic configuration 2881 it can easily lose an electron and form potassium k plus positive ion potassium ion and its configuration is 288 on the other hand similarly hydrogen having an electronic configuration of 1 can easily lose one electron just like potassium and form a positive ion that is hydrogen ion. And hydrogen ion is nothing but a proton since it is not left with any electron and it has no neutrons in it. So it is known as a proton. So just like K plus it is also forming a positive ion in the form of hydrogen H plus. So just like all other metals in the activity series, it, is also has, it also has a tendency to lose electrons. And this is the reason why it has been included in the activity series. Now, let us move towards what is meant by uh, displacement reactions and then we will do these examples. Displacement reaction. It is a chemical change in which a more reactive element displaces a less reactive element from its salt solution. We have AB, any salt solution. It, when it is made to react with C, which is, which is most possibly a more reactive element, 
and AB contains a element which is less reactive. So if we have a situation of this form, in that particular case, what is going to happen? C being more reactive is going to displace this A. That means it is going to move it out and take its position and form CB. This is what is meant by a displacement reaction. And displacement reaction occurs on the basis of the activity series. Uh, this is a general form of the equation and it is also known as a simple displacement reaction. Now, uh, when we are going to study about simple displacement reaction, we will also study about the different types of chemical reactions. Now, you can see certain set of reactions in front of you. Let us see in which category they lie. Now, displacement reaction, the first type of displacement reaction is displacement of a less active metal by a more active metal. Okay, so as the name says, less active metal. Now, if we look at the first equation, this is the first equation is of the type as we have just read out. Zinc, Zn, when made to react with CuSO4, it forms ZnSO4 plus Cu. Now, you can clearly see that in this particular reaction, zinc is more reactive than copper. How do we come to know it is more reactive? It is the activity series of metals. If you look at this series, this series, zinc is above copper in the reactivity series. I think you can clearly see that Zn is above copper in the reactivity series. So, it can easily displace copper from its salt solution and in turn, forms copper sulfate that is how this reaction happens sorry in turn forms zinc displaces copper sulfate copper from copper sulfate and forms ZnSO4 and copper ions so the blue colored copper sulfate solution changes to a colorless solution because of formation of ZnSO4 and please remember this reaction happens in the aqueous solution state that means it should be a solution in water otherwise this reaction does not occur now, the next type of a displacement reaction is displacement of hydrogen from acids by active metals. Now, this is again a very, very important reaction. This particular reaction is also used for the for obtaining hydrogen in the lab. Now, um, let us take this example. The second equation is of this particular case. Magnesium Mg plus H2SO4 in the dilute state forms MgSO4 plus hydrogen. So, what is happening in this case? Magnesium is displacing hydrogen and in turn forming magnesium sulfate. Now, why is magnesium able to displace hydrogen? It is because of the activity series. Now, in the activity series, you can clearly see magnesium is here and hydrogen is here. So, activity series tells us that the metal which is above in the activity series can easily displace a metal below it. So, hydrogen easily gets displaced by magnesium and in turn it forms magnesium sulfate and hydrogen gas is released and hydrogen gas it burns with a pop sound. Now to understand why MgSO4 and the way it is being formed is because magnesium formula of magnesium is Mg2 plus that's the radical sulfate is SO4 2 negative so the formula becomes MgSO4. Now to understand why hydrogen why do we write it as H2 why don't we write it as H just to recall if you people remember gases always exist in molecular form. I hope you all remember this. Gases always exist in molecular form. Hydrogen gas is never written as H. It is always written as H2. Please remember this and make this note in your notebooks. Hydrogen is always written as H2 and not as H. So whenever we write any molecular equation, it is written as H2. Now, let us uh, take a few more examples of um, displacement of this kind where a metal is reacting with acid. So, sodium when it is made to react with HCl, this is a highly explosive reaction, it forms sodium chloride and hydrogen. Now, again this particular reaction I think should be very clear to you all. Why is sodium able to displace hydrogen? Because sodium is above hydrogen in the reactivity series. The sodium can easily displace hydrogen and in turn it forms sodium chloride. Now, why sodium chloride? Why the formula is NaCl? Because sodium has valency 1, chlorine also has valency 1 and hydrogen gas is being displaced. Similarly, zinc with H2SO4, zinc is above hydrogen in the activity series. You can clearly see it here. Zinc is here, hydrogen is here. So, when they react together, it forms ZnSO4 plus hydrogen gas. 
Now again here formula is ZnSO4 because zinc is Zn2 plus, sulfate is SO4 2 negative, formula becomes ZnSO4. So the equation when zinc is made to react with H2SO4 becomes that it zinc displaces hydrogen. So hydrogen comes out in the form of H2 gas as we just did it, as we just discussed and the other product formed is ZnSO4. So these were the reactions wherein a metal is displacing hydrogen from acids. Now the third type of a displacement reaction is displacement reaction in which a more active non-metal displaces a less active non-metal from its compound. Now this is the third equation potassium iodide this is a here iodine is a non-metal potassium iodide is one compound it is made to react with a non-metal say chlorine. Now chlorine if you remember from the activity series chlorine is more reactive than iodine in the activity series. As a result it displaces iodine. So on displacing it forms potassium chloride and iodine. So the color changes from colorless solution to a yellowish brown color. Okay, so this was the third type of our displacement reaction. Fourth type is displacement of hydrogen gas from water by active metals. Again, this is a very, very important reaction. Sodium when made to react with water forms sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. I hope hydrogen, releasing of hydrogen gas must be very clear. Why? Because sodium is above hydrogen in the activity series and thus displaces hydrogen. Now, before I explain you further this about this reaction, please understand potassium, sodium and calcium. These are three metals which are highly reactive. When we talk about activity series, most reactive metals are right at the top. Since they are highly reactive, they can easily react with cold water also. And the reaction is highly explosive, highly exothermic. So when they react with water, they form hydroxides. They do not form oxides, they form hydroxide. So you need to understand that if sodium is reacting with water, it forms sodium hydroxide and hydrogen. And another thing, water is formed of two ions. It contains hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. So hydrogen ion forms hydrogen gas and hydroxide ion combines with sodium forming NaOH. Sodium also has a valency 1, hydroxide also has a valency 1. This is how this reaction takes place. So you, I think it should be easy for you all to understand now how the products of this particular reactions are of these displacement reactions are being formed. Now let us move on to our fifth type of displacement reaction that is displacement of a less reactive metal by a more reactive metal from its oxide and this is ideally a very very important reaction which is used industrially. Copper oxide, so we are talking about displacement of a less reactive metal by a more reactive metal from its oxide. Now magnesium is more reactive than copper as you can see in the activity series, magnesium is here and copper is here. So magnesium is more reactive than copper. Now since magnesium is more reactive than copper, so it can easily displace copper from copper oxide and in turn releases copper in the form of reddish brown uh, copper metal is formed and on the other hand magnesium combines with oxygen forming magnesium oxide. Again magnesium has a valency 2, oxide has valency 2. So the product formed is MgO. So this is how this reaction happens. Now the next type of reaction which is also the example of the same, same fifth type of reaction is very very important it is known as thermite welding. This particular reaction is generally used for welding iron objects especially iron girders or your railway tracks or your any iron machinery okay on a very large scale. So ferric oxide Fe2O3 it is a solid when it is made to react with aluminium, aluminium being more reactive metal than iron. So you can see in the reactivity series here is aluminium, here is iron. So aluminium is above iron so it can easily displace iron, iron moves out in the form of liquid. So because the temperature is very high iron melts out. So liquid iron is formed and on the other hand the other product is Al2O3, aluminium oxide Al2O3 which is a solid. So this was our fifth type of displacement reaction. Now coming to our last type of displacement reaction that is displacement of hydrogen uh, of hydrogen when metals zinc, aluminium and lead react with hot concentrated alkali. This is again a very very important reaction. Um, so this is the reaction zinc when made to react with NaOH sodium hydroxide 
it should be hot and concentrated it forms na2zno2 plus hydrogen now i think releasing of hydrogen should be very clear because as per the activity series zinc is above hydrogen so it will displace hydrogen so this is how hydrogen comes out now but in case of sodium hydroxide the formula is naoh so there is an nao it just does not combine straight away forming naozn so there is no such formula the formula is we have a radical by the name zincate so zno2 2 negative so formula is zno2 2 negative sodium has valency 1 so formula becomes na2 zno2 plus hydrogen gas is released another case is lead with con hot concentrated sodium hydroxide forms na2 pbo2 sodium plum uh, it's sodium plumbite pbo2 2 negative is the formula again the same way as we did for zinc and hydrogen gas is released because lead is above hydrogen in the activity series now these are the basic kinds of your displacement reactions now it's very important for you all to note down that metals below hydrogen cannot displace hydrogen or metals above it very very important okay so metals below hydrogen cannot displace hydrogen or the metals which are above it can also not be displaced this is very very important a metal lower in the activity series a metal lower in the activity series can never displace a metal above it this is something to be noted now there are certain set of reactions which ideally are never possible copper if made to react with water is never going to form copper oxide and hydrogen copper can never displace hydrogen why because copper is below hydrogen in the activity series silver when made to react with na2so4 sodium sulfate it is never going to form agso4 and sodium because silver is here in the activity series and sodium is here sodium is far above silver in the activity series so it's again not a possible reaction not a feasible reaction copper if made to react with feso4 forming cuso4 plus fe again this particular reaction is not possible so if you write reaction like this they are always going to be wrong so you must also copy down such equations which are ideally wrong however this equation can be corrected in this form we can write it like this fe plus cuso4 copper ions are blue in color in aqueous solution state it its color changes from blue to iron because iron displaces copper from copper sulfate and in turn forms feso4 which is green color in aqueous solution state and reddish brown copper metal formed so these were all the displacement reactions i hope children you all have understood this topic in the next topic i will be uh, taking in detail about the activity series of metals uh, and non metals and at the same time we will also discuss uh, double decomposition reactions thank you so much